Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are continuing with the key to key signatures. I'm going to give you an advanced look at some of the document options to help you customize the look of your key signature, and I'll take a look at keyless and the hide key signature options in Finale, as well as uh, we'll get into the enharmonic spelling tables in Finale as well. So, But let's start with uh, some document options to show you how to customize the look of your key signatures. And of course, it's in document, document options. And we have the fonts option again. If you go to fonts, notation, we can find key. And this is where you'd be able to set the font for the key signatures on a global scale. So uh, I've got Maestro set here, but if you wanted to change it to another font, then other than the default font that you have set for your file, you can do that. Uh, that's how you do that. And then there is a key signature pane in the document options. And we're going to go through uh, these options so, so you can kind of see what they are, all right? So the first one here is display key signature only on first staff system, and it's unchecked by default, but if I check it and hit apply, you'll see that in the second system, the key signature went away. So I've got D major and it went away. If I uncheck it again, you'll see it come back. And it happens over here on the second page as well. You see the key of G flat goes away. So this is how you what you would use for uh, uh, lead sheets if you wanted to just show the key signature on the first system and then hide it from from there on out. And it will show it on the first system of every page, by the way. So that's how you would do that. All right, in C, display naturals at start of staff system. Let me just scroll down a little bit here so you can see I've got a key of C major right here. I'll go back to document options. And if I were to have that checked, hit apply, and you'll see that it's showing the natural sign, canceling out the B minor. It cancels it out here as well, but it will redisplay the canceled right there as well. All right, so you can use that if you'd like. Uh, let's uncheck that as well. Uh, read display key signature only if mode is changing. Now we talked about that in the first video, going from D major here to B minor, it's redisplaying this key signature, but if I uncheck that, obviously that whole thing goes away. Uh, cancel outgoing key signature. Yeah, let me just go over to the other side of this file to show you this. I've got some key signatures set up here on the last page get back to that document options window uh, cancel outgoing key signature so you notice I'm going from F sharp major to E major and I've got two natural signs in the flute just canceling out the A sharp and E sharp but if we uncheck that and hit apply that'll go away and it just plainly states the key signature same thing here I'm going from E to G and let's recheck that and now you'll see that the E signature uh, canceled out for the G. And of course, the sub option here when switching between sharps and flats by default is not checked. Um, and you see that uh, going from G to E flat, it's not canceling out the F sharp. But if I have that checked and hit apply, you'll see that it now adds the natural before the E flat as well. All right, so that's what that does. Um, and display courtesy key signature at end of staff system is exactly what that is. So again, from G to E flat, you've got the courtesy key signature there, and we can uncheck that, hit apply, and it goes away. And that's a global setting for all courtesy key signatures. There is a way to hide courtesy key signatures uh, locally using the measure attributes tool, but uh, we'll get to that when we talk about measure attributes. And finally, this last option here, Preserve octave when simplifying keys. Now I'm going to pull up the language directly from the finale documentation on this one. Preserve octave when simplifying keys. When using simplify keys in a staff transposition, finale will octave displace a note in some rare circumstances. Checking this box will prevent the octave jump while attempting to simplify the key for transposing instruments. This box is unchecked for documents converted from earlier versions. Now, I believe the key to this is the last sentence. The, it's unchecked for documents converted from earlier versions. Uh, my sense is I can't confirm this 100%, but I believe that at some point in Finale's history, there was a bug in Finale where it, Finale would uh, displace a note by an octave on, in certain transposing instruments. So at some point, they added this option to preserve that octave when simplifying keys to fix that bug. However, instead of just fixing the bug, they left it as an option that you can uncheck or check, um, probably because they, if somebody had an older file and it had that bug, they probably made a manual fix to certain notes. And so if they were to convert to a newer version, 
and the bug was fixed, and that manual fix that they made would get unfixed. So then they'd have to go through and unfix their fix, if that makes sense. <laughs> so suffice it to say, uh, leave this option checked. It's really kind of um, just just a, a, a something to fix a bug. And unless you're c you know converting a file from I don't know how old, uh, there's no reason to to mess with that. All right. Uh, so in the second half of this uh, key signature pane in the document options, we have spacing options, and, and I won't necessarily need to go through all of this, but it, it is kind of explanatory, self-explanatory what it is. You can put extra space with before key signature, after, after canceled key, space between key signature accidental. So, you know, for example, if I were to just do something like that, you know, <laughs> you can see I get a crazy uh, spacing here. This is a good way to, you know, if you if you want to uh, fine tune the look of your key signatures, this is this is where you do it. And extra space between key and time signature uh, for those instances when you have that. And finally, in the bottom part of this uh, key signature pane, we have music characters: natural, flat, sharp, double flat, double sharp. And this is where we can actually change the the character within the font set of any of these from the key signature. So this will relate to the natural sign in a key signature and you hit select and it pulls up the symbol selection box um, for the Maestro font or whatever font you have active and you can choose any font that you want or any character that you want to replace the natural sign. Um, probably handy if you're doing some avant-garde stuff and you know if you're if you want to put a quarter flat or something and and you can you know uh, you can you can figure that out by doing that, all right? That's that's where you would do that. All right, so that's the document options uh, for key signatures. Uh, next, I wanna look at uh, key lists. Uh, now, uh, if you remember from the key signature dialog box, I'm just gonna go to this little passage right here, pull up that box. We looked in the first video at major and minor keys, and uh, there's a third option here called key list, which is exactly what it is. If you want to write in a key list, key, a key list key, that makes sense, sure. Uh, you can just select keyless, and you'll have the notes without the, the key signature, right? Now, uh, Finale will appropriately, I'm just going to switch to display and concert pitch and just watch the, the horn part here. It starts on F, display and concert pitch, and it, it displays it. So, you know, uh, the keyless will, it will pr still preserve the transpositions, but um, none of the instruments, uh, regardless of the transposition of the instrument, will get a key signature in that instance, if that makes sense. All right, so we can go back to, what was that? Uh, G flat, I think, right? Let's go back to G flat major. Uh, there we go. Um, and if you notice, there's another option. Let me go to this uh, section here. We have keyless, but we also have hide key signature and show all accidentals, which ostensibly does the same thing. So if I have that checked, I'm in F sharp major, but I have this option checked, and the key signature goes away. It sort of looks like it's keyless. It is, but it isn't. Uh, and I'll show you how what I mean by that in, in a second. So if I let me just zoom in here so I can illustrate this. So now remember what I have set up here. It's F sharp major, but it's not displaying the key signature. Now if I were to start entering some notes, let's start uh, enter a chromatic scale starting on F sharp. Uh, you'll notice that it's it's spelling the the, uh, the notes as if it were an F sharp using the spelling tables, um, right? You've got all sharps. However, let's undo all of that, go back and change this to, uncheck that, go to keyless for these three bars and enter the same scale Now we've got flats and sharps. Now this is essentially the spelling table of C major, okay? Um, so there is a subtle difference between um, uh, keyless and keys with that option checked, uh, hide key signature and show all accidentals. Uh, it can be useful, I was thinking about how this could be used. I mean, if, you, if, you're, if you're writing a keyless piece and or, or you're writing a movie score, for example, and you know the tradition in movie scoring a lot of the times is not to write in a key, but you're really in a key center for a long time. You know what I mean? Like you could go to you can go to D major and hide key signature and show all accidentals. Um, it will help with your spelling tables a little bit um, as you enter notes. It'll it'll make the uh, it'll make the notes that you enter uh, um, make more sense initially, if that makes sense. 
Um, so that's how you would do that. All right. Um, and speaking of spelling tables, because I just started talking about that, we talked about that a little bit in the first video, um, just as it relates to you know the difference between major and minor. If you remember, C major and A minor has a different, uh, slightly different spelling table. You've got the D flat versus the C sharp uh, in A minor, and some other sharps versus flats in A minor. All right. Um, now I just want to show you a few ways that you can actually uh, manipulate these spelling tables, and it's in the finale menu. Uh, we're looking at enharmonic spelling. And what's checked by default is use spelling tables. And there's a few other options that I want to show you. We have favor flats. So if we check favor flats, and I'm going to go here and enter the same chromatic scale, you'll notice that it does what you said it, you told it to do. It favor the flats. So now we have a G flat instead of an F sharp. All right, let's undo that and go into the enharmonic spelling table and favor sharps. And surprise, surprise, it will enter all sharps. All right, so that's handy if uh, you know if you if you know what you're um, what you're about to enter, you can go and, and uh, switch these back and forth if you really want. And then finally, finally, use default spelling. Now in single lines, uh, this will be a little bit different. So in the keys of C, in uh, in any flat key and the key of C or keyless. Uh, it will favor flats when you have that option selected, but in a sharp key, it will favor sharps, like that. All right. So that's with the uh, use default spelling tables selected. And there's one other important uh, distinction that is useful to know about with that particular option checked. Now let's go for a minute. Let's go back to use spelling tables, and <coughs> I'm going to enter some. Uh, major chords in the left hand here, um, chromatically. Give me a second here. And you'll notice that Finale is dutifully using the spelling tables to create these chords and with with results that may be you don't really want. Like this chord, for example, you have F-sharp, B-flat, and D-flat, because in the spelling table you have F-sharp, B-flat, and D-flat, right? So it's using the spelling table, but it doesn't look quite correct. However, if you were to use the default spelling and enter the same thing, Finale magically figures out that you're entering major chords and they should probably look like major chords. So it will uh, uh, neatly, um, it neatly create uh, tr perfect triads for you. All right, so it's useful, particularly if you're using writing piano parts or for other chordal instruments to use that, uh, that spelling the use default spelling table at times. Um, and then going down here, we have the something called edit major and minor key spellings. Now, if we have the N, the enharmonic spelling, use spelling tables, right? Um, what this option is, we can actually edit the spelling tables. All right, so if we open this dialog box, what we get is this uh, spelling table dialog box. And you'll see that we have major keys and minor keys. And it'll tell you exactly what those spelling tables are, basically. You know, between one and two, it's giving you the flat two. Between two and three, the flat three. Between four and five, the sharp four. Between five and six, the flat six. Between six and seven, the flat seven. And that's for major keys, right? We can actually edit this. So if we want, for example, the sharp one instead of the flat two, we just check that and click OK. And if we go in here and now enter our chromatic scale again, you'll notice that it uh, writes a C sharp instead of a D flat for us. Kind of handy. If we know kind of how we want to manipulate those spelling tables, we can use that to our advantage. And of course, it only does it going forward. It's not going to uh, change it in retrospect. Um, this D flat will, will remain there. Unless, of course, you go to uh, the retranscribe option, and then it'll uh, <laughs> change that D flat to C sharp um, like for this from the spelling table. Okay. So let's go back and just, oops, let's go back and just undo that and make sure that we have that checked. And of course, you can change the minor key as well. This is this, the default setting of Finale's uh, spelling table for minor keys, and you can go ahead and change that as well. All right, and then finally, enharmonic spelling, edit modal or chromatic spellings. Now, if I pull up this dialog box, I get this thing, edit modal or chromatic spellings, and this gives me another dialog box 
which I believe is related to the non-standard key signatures, which I'm going to show you in a second. Now, it was the last option in this key signature dialog box on the right-hand side, major, minor, keyless, non-standard. And if we check that, we get this non-standard key signature dialog box to appear. Now, I am going to admit that I this is a dark corner of Finale that I've never been to in my life. The non-standard key signature, I've never had a need to use it. Uh, I've never explored it. I, a few days ago, I, I started looking at this to see if I could make sense of it. There are a, a ton of options, and when you start getting into these things, there's there's more options and sub menus, and it's like like going through a dark maze that that you don't that I've never been to. So for the time being, I'm going to skip the non-standard key signatures. I'm assuming that probably 99.83% you know, of you have no need to use the non-standard key signature. Um, and uh, if you do have a, a need for it, you, you may have to go other w other places to find out how to use it for now. Um, unless somebody can uh, actually show me how to use this, uh, this dialog box and uh, show me how to create some non-standard key signatures. Uh, maybe at some point I'll come back and do another video just on that if I can... Uh, manage to figure it out for myself. I mean, I do know what it does. I do know that you can mix accidentals, you know, have a, a key signature with mixed sharps and flats. Um, or, or And also, I, I believe that you can uh, create tonal centers that have more than 12 pitches, um, which is useful for some ethnic music. Um, but for now, I I'm going to, uh, I'm going to bow out of the non-standard key signature. Um, uh, discussion for the moment until I can figure that out and I'm, I may come back to that at a later date all right so wow I covered a lot we covered the document options we covered keyless versus hide key signature and we've covered uh, in depth the in inharmonic spelling table so uh, at this point you should have a pretty good um, a pretty good uh, uh, understanding of key signatures in finale and I'm going to do a few more videos on a, on a few uh, specific uh, things with key signatures, including how to put a key signature in the middle of a bar and also how to do um, independent key signatures for, for different instruments and stuff like that. So uh, come on back for uh, a couple more lessons and um, we'll go from there. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.